Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the MMAC Focus on the Future Awards. I'm Sheldon Dutez, co-anchor of WISN 12 News this morning, and I'm honored to serve as your MC for today's presentation, which I think will provide some much-needed positive news and some captivating stories. Today, we will look at 65 honorees who have demonstrated success during the worst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Through the power of their perseverance and the spirit of their innovation, these companies and people are examples of Milwaukee at its best resilience in the face of challenges. They gave us hope for the future, something a lot of us could use a little bit more of these days. The focus on the future awards are presented by the Metropolitan Milwaukee Association of Commerce, the Chamber of Commerce representing the Milwaukee region in partnership with BizTimes Media. And with that, I'll turn it over to the longtime leader of the MMAC, Tim Sheehy. You know, five months into this pandemic, it's great to be able to shine a spotlight on local companies and organizations to share their inspirational stories. Today, for the next hour, I want you to enjoy and remember as we focus on what's coming in front of us, working together, supporting our community, and staying true to our values. Because Milwaukee is resilient, our people are resilient, and our companies are resilient. Today, MMAC will honor 65 companies and organizations and individuals who are not just surviving in these times, they're thriving. But before we get started, I want to thank our sponsors who made this event possible. The Focus on the Future Awards are presented by First Midwest Bank, and they're sponsored by Sitzberger & Company and Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield in collaboration with Aurora Healthcare. BizTimes Media is MMAC's media partner for the awards, and they're going to also help us tell our honorees' stories. So let's get an inside look at what's in store for Milwaukee's future. And to do that, I'm thrilled to introduce our newly named Commissioner of the Department of City Development, Lafayette Crump. Lafayette is the city's chief business development officer. He's committed to connecting everyone in Milwaukee's economic success. And before taking on this new challenge, he was an attorney at several law firms, maybe best known for his work at Prism Technical Management and Marketing Services, a firm that helps developers and general contractors hire disadvantaged business enterprises. Most recently, he was the Chief Diversity Vendor and Engagement Officer at Milwaukee 2020 Host Committee for the Democratic National Convention. Thank you, Tim. It's an honor to join you at this event and to join in recognizing the resilience and imagination of 65 Milwaukee area organizations and people who have shown remarkable perseverance, creativity, and public spirit during these remarkable last several months that we've had. Without question, the coronavirus pandemic and the ensuing economic challenges have forced us all to reimagine, retrench, and replan how we do business. For many businesses, their future is at stake. Sadly, some have been un unable to weather the storm, but we remain hopeful that those behind those businesses will find even greater success with future ventures. We must retain that hope and use it as fuel to act, as our 65 honorees know all too well. There's every indication that the crises are temporary. We will resolve the public health challenge, and when that happens, people will return to more normal routines, even if it is a new normal. Yes, there will be some permanent changes. We've all become more adept at virtual meetings, but I think we all sense an eagerness to get back to normal with a return to the office, to restaurants, to entertainment, to schools, and to travel. Now, at the same time we have faced the public health and economic crises, another important awakening is taking place centered on issues of fundamental fairness and equity. It's impossible to view the video of George Floyd's death without seeing injustice. The reverberations of that video, along with numerous subsequent events and previous ones that have received renewed attention, have prompted serious reflections about injustice in many parts of our society. Of course, moving from a plane of injustice to one of equity is a moral issue, but it's also an economic issue. When we fully and fairly include everyone in our economy, we all benefit. When African-American and Latinx business people have open and equal access, not to mention Asian business owners, the LGBTQ community, people with disabilities and others, employment grows, consumer spending grows, and we all benefit 
in Metro Milwaukee and nationwide. We know from the experience of COVID-19 that solutions to our biggest challenges require objectivity, flexibility, and an openness to try new approaches. It will take these principles and more to address issues of equity and fairness alongside a robust economic recovery. Our team at the City of Milwaukee is, like all of you, focused on the future. We are deploying resources to assist small businesses to recover from the present downturn. Mayor Tom Barrett has directed us to spend millions of dollars in direct support to small Milwaukee businesses. We're advancing development projects and prioritizing work in city neighborhoods where development is needed most. We're working to improve housing, worker readiness, and transportation options. And we're not doing it alone. All of you are our partners in crafting Milwaukee's future. A more equitable and sustainable economic future will be defined by creative leaders like today's awardees. Yes, I'm optimistic, and I hope all of you share that feeling. Whether you're a business that has retooled its supply chain or entered a new market space, or someone who supported our frontline workers or your employees in incredibly difficult times, congratulations are in order for the 2020 MMAC Focus on the Future awardees. But so is gratitude. So thank you. Thank you for your creativity. Thank you for your perseverance. And thank you for the example that you set by believing in and focusing on the future. Thank you, Lafayette. Now we're on to the honorees. We will briefly run through the honorees and highlight some of the stories that uh, really highlight the resilience that emerged through the nomination process. You can read more about each of the nominees in the BizTime September 28th edition. Now, our first category is new links in the chain. Under difficult conditions, these honorees retooled their supply chain or made new links in other supply chains to meet market demands. Our honorees include Duet Resource Group, Exciting Events, Gross Automation LLC, Hunger Task Force, IAS Incorporated, Lanix LLC, Micro Synergies, Part Badger. Let's take a look at one of the companies that created a new partnership to dramatically ramp up production of products in high market demand. Now, throughout the pandemic, consumer demand for antibacterial wipes really has been insatiable. IAS worked with a major manufacturer of this highly coveted product to implement a robotic system to increase volume. Now, as consumers turn to their computers to order their groceries, IAS worked with companies to create packaged goods assembly lines to meet the increased demand for online purchases. But IAS did not stop there. They were also able to expedite more COVID testing by integrating robots into their production process and bringing single-use swabbing testing kits to the market. Now, to support the growth and new links established, IAS underwent a 15,000 square foot expansion of manufacturing space at its headquarters on May 1st and has added six new employees. Congratulations, IAS. Next up, Parts Badger. Parts Badger makes precision manufactured parts for just about every industry that you can think of. Their products are made both internationally and right here in the United States. When supply chains got disrupted early on in the pandemic, that presented a challenge that Parts Badger rose to meet. When the team learned that they were potentially facing a major manufacturing shutdown in China, they worked to establish new supply chain links for their international capacity. They quickly found solutions from other parts of China, Malaysia, and Singapore, and most importantly, right here in the United States. The company has also invested nearly $750,000 to enhance its domestic output with new machinery and hiring more staffers. This forward thinking helped them stay on top of production. Congratulations. Task Force is your free and local food bank. We've been around since 1974. Uh, we not only deliver food to food pantries, soup kitchens, and homeless shelters, we serve about 125 senior public um, dining sites and senior uh, public housing across Milwaukee County. And we also are the organizers of the Hunger Relief Federation of Wisconsin. There's been a lot more unemployed people. Um, there were seniors that we could not ignore or leave even though their senior dining sites were closed. Um, lots and lots of kids that didn't get access to school breakfast or lunch and their parents struggling with job loss. And so our services became even more imperative than they had been in the past. We heard news reports like literally early April about farmers across the state of Wisconsin spilling their milk. And that was because they lost their markets for both cheese and milk that would normally have been um, restaurants and school systems. 
people first were experiencing the pandemic, a lot of people that were of means and still had income donated funding to make sure that other people were fed. And because we saw such a dramatic increase in donations in the month of April, our board of directors committed a million dollars to purchase milk, cheese and yogurt from Wisconsin farmers. And then we distributed it basically from Ashland to Kenosha and La Crosse to Green Bay. And so these were all Wisconsin businesses that we were able to reach out to and um, to keep their supply chains intact, to buy their products at fair market value um, using donor contributions. And we fed hungry people. Well, we're just frugal people here in Wisconsin and we don't like to see any kind of waste happening at all. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't waste that product. Um, and so the farmers won, uh, families, hungry families won and uh, we made sure that we supported a lot of the middle people who are either packaging the cheese or delivering the products and so we kept the supply chains intact as well entire um, cheese making companies were called back into work because we bought their product There's amazing people out there i get to meet them because i've been essential i still move about the community freely i'm the person who greets you at the parking lot and gives you your mask um, and I don't see sad and angry. I see people thanking and blessing. Um, and I feel thankful and I feel blessed by all of it. We have distributed 3,042,584 pounds of cheese, milk, and yogurt. We've raised $1,846,201. Watching the list in the lineup of groups who didn't bemoan the pandemic, but instead looked at their business models and just made some changes, um, contributed, figured out new ways to do business instead of just the same old. Um, they didn't go home. They just got better and they got smarter. And I'm super proud to be honored along with them. Thank you. And congratulations to the team at Hunger Task Force. Our next category is mother or father of invention. The idea that no good crisis should go to waste has driven these firms to create a new product or service or radically change the way that they do business. Our honorees are Badger Technology Group Incorporated, Booth Central Incorporated, Central Office Systems, Central Standard Craft Distillery, The Chef's Table, Clarity Management LLC, hashtag Lunch with Lori, Conoils LLC, Helix Incorporated, Milwaukee Center for Independence, Milwaukee Food and City Tours, MKE Tech Hub Coalition and the Commons, Pat Miller, The Idea Coach, Server Products, Stonehouse Innovations, LLC, Top Line Results Corporation, West Alice Blue, Large Format Graphics. The Milwaukee Tech Hub Coalition and the Commons. In April, the Milwaukee Tech Hub Coalition and the Commons started hearing stories of students losing their internships because of COVID-19. Well, these internships allow students to gain work experience and meet graduation requirements. They also provide needed income for education and living expenses. Within six weeks, the Milwaukee Tech Hub Coalition and the Commons launched a virtual internship program around technology and innovation. Students received projects, mentoring, career development guidance, advanced technical content, and a stipend. More than 700 students applied and a diverse group of 100 students were accepted. Beyond helping students advance their career development, this program is connecting students and employers in a new way and will hopefully help retain those students here as talented employees in the future. The Tech Hub and the Commons expect to expand on this mission in the fall. Thank you to the Milwaukee Tech Hub and the Commons for finding a new way to deliver this valuable experience. Central Office Systems worked with exciting events to develop a fast, accurate, touchless way to scan employees and visitors for temperatures. Most organizations were using handheld temperature scanning devices to scan their employees and visitors' temperatures. Central Office Systems recognized that this created an increase in potential virus exposure for the person taking those temperatures. It was also time consuming for both the employees and the visitors entering a workplace. The two organizations collaborated to create a better solution. They used a technology similar to a facial recognition system and developed an affordable kiosk that any organization can deploy to help keep their employees safe. Congratulations, Central Office Systems. 
Badger Tech is a startup company that won a major contract to modernize a fleet of C-130 cargo planes for Saudi Arabia. Well, just as that contract was about to begin, COVID-19 arrived. And with it, the global economy froze and the contract was delayed. Well, the team at Badger Technology designed and engineered a large-scale disinfecting system using ozone rather than chemicals. They got to work on a portable system that could be used almost anywhere. Ozone was already widely used to kill germs, bacteria, and mold, and had already been proven to kill MERS and SARS viruses. To date, hotels in India, Israel, Mexico, England, and the United States have purchased these products, and right now guests around the world are sleeping safely. Nice work, Badger Technology Group. We were fortunate enough to get into the Global Water Center when it opened, and we've been there ever since. And uh, that provided us with a, a lot of um, latest information on water technology. And um, that's who we are. We're a technology company. We developed a, um, a water purification system, um, and we've been doing that for the last uh, five, five, five or six, six years. years. And we were developing new products for um, the water industry, and along came COVID, and we came up with some really pretty cool ideas. And so we, we, we started with the theory of what, what would it take for us to feel safe going back to work? Our president of Stonehouse Water Technology is Dr. Mo uh, Mokibi, and um, he came up with a formulation for what we call Dr. Mo's Mist, which is an air sanitizer, and it all, uses all natural ingredients. We have a, a new, new way of treating water, and so one of the ideas is that we can really go small, but has a tremendous advantage of residence time, have a filter that will kill um, bacteria and viruses, and we can make that into either a shower head or a filter before the shower head, um, and we can do it under the sink as well. So these are these are potentially life changing um, ideas and inventions. So we're really proud that um, we're coming up with these. We can also deliver a workable prototype and pre production model very very quickly. Uh, on Mo's Miss, we we did that from concept to market ready uh, in under four months. Our biggest desire is if we could um, recognize that some of these really cool ideas, and it's not just us, it's everybody, uh, that come along, that they need a, a way to prove their technology besides just saying, hey, it, it works, we know, we've tested it. It's gotta be independently verified, and it's gotta be done you know, quickly, and it's gotta be done uh, inexpensively. And we think that pathway is through the university systems. A lot of universities we talk to would love to get together with, you know, uh, private and, and public um, relationships, and yet we still find it difficult to collaborate um, because of a lot of barriers. I just think Wisconsin, you know, has the skill sets mm -hmm. for so many things, and um, just just turn us loose. See, by companies recognized for doing their part and and trying to make not only Milwaukee great, but the state great and the country great. I mean, it's 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 quite humbling. It's great. Congratulations to the entire team at Stonehouse. Our next category is fueling the front lines. During the initial stages of this pandemic, no group of people was more important or more in need of support than our frontline healthcare workers. These honorees came to the aid of healthcare or other frontline workers when they needed it the most. All right, let's hear some of their stories. Kane Communications Group. Nourish Natural Products, Plitzka's Adventures LLC, DBA Headline IT, Surfaceside Manufacturing, SVA, a professional services company, YMCA of Metropolitan Milwaukee. Surfaceside Manufacturing Incorporated. Before the pandemic, decontamination was a highly specialized industry, and then suddenly everyone needed it. Surfaceside Manufacturing develops technology solutions to make medical environments safer, including a UVC disinfection and decontamination system. The system uses the power of ultraviolet energy to significantly reduce the risk of environmental transfer of bacteria. The company has become a trusted partner to nearly 500 leading hospitals all across the world. By decontaminating high-risk areas, Surfaceside reduces the exposure risk to frontline workers. 
During the pandemic, Surfside gained global attention. Their technology is now helping facilities reprocess N95 masks, extending the life of this critical personal protective equipment and helping caregivers provide and navigate PPE supply chain challenges. Congratulations, Surfside. Pliska's Adventures LLC, hands-off approach helps essential workers. Don't touch your face. How many times have we heard that in 2020? One company can actually help with a product that is particularly useful for essential workers. Company founder and author Jody Pliska is the award-winning inventor of the headline it No Sweat Touchless Hands-Free Cooling Liners. Now these products have been featured on ABC's American Inventor TV show. 34 years ago, Jody lost her hair to alopecia. Since then, she has made it her mission to help essential workers stop sweat without touching their faces. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Jody took the headline at liners and it turned them into be safe masks since the material has a waterproof barrier. Jody and her daughter run the business, helping essential workers at several client companies with hands-free sweat protection. Jody and Jess also help people as professional counselors. Congratulations, team. Well, um, at the YMCA, we really have three focus areas that we have. They're youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. We only exist to meet the needs of the community, and we have a long history of this. Going where we're most needed. It's what we have to do, and it's how we operate. We started these emergency response camps. We didn't know a lot about the virus and how it spread. So all the staff pledged to completely isolate themselves just to protect the frontline employees of those emergency responders, their kids and their families. We've also pivoted in so many ways. We created all new programs for vulnerable seniors, We've taken our fitness classes online and then outside and across the city. Every facet of an already broad reaching organization has completely shifted. And that's really all thanks to the team and our volunteers. The staff just stepped up and said, you know what, this isn't too important. These emergency responders need us and we know what we're good at. So we're gonna step in. We worked with local and national health leaders to really de develop those standards. And then we completely reshaped the pandemic safety and options for families across the straight, uh, state as we spread the word of what we were doing to other wives and other communities. The response was overwhelming. Um, these are people's kids and families, and they knew they could trust the why to keep them safe. Um, for the families who were faced with an impossible decision, I mean, remember that they had to go to work and there was a fear but they had to go work for us, these essential workers. We started with these safety protocols and we haven't let up. Um, and that I think because of that, parents are trusting us as they need to go to work or they need to go back to school. They needed a place that they can care for their kids. Through our summer camps and now as we partner with schools in a whole new way, whether it's before and after school for those that are actually going back to school or if it's actually virtual. And they really wanted the, their, their children in a safe environment learning, but at the same time getting some physical activity. And it's powerful to see so many teams working tirelessly, keeping our city thriving. Thank you so much for the award because it really recognizes and inspires all of us to continue the work of impact that we do in this community. And that we're looking to partner with others because together we know we can become a better us. Thank you and congratulations to the entire YMCA of Metropolitan Milwaukee team. Our next category is Pivot, Not Panic. Here we honor organizations and individual honorees that displayed clarity and purpose, showing exemplary leadership during the pandemic. Our honorees are Excelity, Advanced Hires, American Construction Services, Brunch, Morgan Schnabel, Celesta LLC, Nina King, Gale Foods LLC, Michael Schwartz, Greater Brookfield Chamber of Commerce, Carol White. The Greater Milwaukee Committee, Julia Taylor. En Vivo Wellness, Luter Financial Group, Matt Luter. Physical Therapy Milwaukee, Dr. Silvestra Ramirez. Rehab Resources, a division of Greenfield Rehabilitation Agency, Ginger Brath and Kate Brewer. Sparity, Darren Fisher, The Tandem. Now to some of their stories. 
Looter Financial Group. Financial services have a reputation of white male dominance. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, Looter Financial Group was committed to changing the landscape of financial services to better serve and reflect all Milwaukee communities. During the pandemic, the company has doubled down on these efforts. The last few months have exposed systemic inequities that only strengthen this mission. Matt Luter believes in the power of change. He is committed to bringing on 15 more employees of color and female advisors to serve clients and communities. Matt believes that we must keep our purpose central and boldly and passionately support each other and mobilize for a more equitable, prosperous world. Congratulations to Matt and the entire team. Sparity, Darren Fisher. Throughout the pandemic, Darren Fisher has demonstrated Sparity's commitment to improving the local community and developing people. As the leader of a peer-to-peer -peer executive roundtable group with the MMAC Council of Small Business Executives, Darren helped the group transition from in-person to virtual meetings so they could continue helping one another through the challenges each business was facing. They began meeting more frequently and diving deeper into the difficult issues creating havoc in their companies. He challenged Sparity to reinvent its long-standing business improvement quarterly event to a virtual format, increasing the number of attendees without sacrificing any of the quality content. Clients shared that Sparity's app allowed them to pivot seamlessly from the office to work from home expectations without a loss in performance. As a black Milwaukee leader, Darren has addressed racism in both video and live presentations. He is currently working on a program to empower black brown leadership here in the community. Darren sees his personal efforts and the company he founded as an important contribution to Milwaukee's economy by giving leaders the skills, tools, and support they need to continuously improve and achieve success. Nice work and congratulations, Darren and the Sparity team. Yale Foods is uniquely uh, positioned as one of just a very, very few companies in the entire world that produces both food and beverage products in a ready to serve a septic sterilization process that locks in freshness for eight to up to 18 months without refrigeration. We had to pivot and we had to redirect our resources, our focus, uh, our processes uh, against things that were going to line up with the, the new world. And that specifically is around, uh, you know, what we sell and where we sell and looking at it a lot differently than we had in the past. We needed to really identify what lines up with what the consumer is doing today versus what they were doing in the past. So first and foremost, we, we need to start with a clear financial plan and we have to work all the way down the supply chain and bring all of those things together along with marketing, uh, finance, uh, our operating team, and uh, it makes, it makes certain we, we practice or we trial the product and it uh, meets our specifications. Uh, and we're also making headway into the online segment because online sales in some cases have doubled over the last uh, couple of months. Recognizing after we had done a lot of uh, gathering of facts and what have you, we, we recognized that we needed smaller packages. Okay, our, our typical pouches would be, uh, maybe the smallest one would have been 50 ounces, but typically they're over 100 ounces. And we needed something that was more relevant for the consumer, uh, even though it had, it had been told me multiple times before that we couldn't do it. They figured out a way to utilize our existing lines to get it down to a, uh, a smaller, uh, very, very uh, stable pouch. And uh, these these uh, folks are very experienced, very talented, very committed to the company. They all completely understood uh, where we were and what we were up against in terms of uh, the incredible shift in our business. And uh, they all worked together and figured out a way to make it happen. Uh, you know, Milwaukee, it, it's, it's not a surprise. I mean, Milwaukee has long been considered a hub of uh, extremely talented, innovative, uh, really, really focused against manufacturing. The pandemic was not our fault, but it is our problem. That would be the one thing that I would say that our company has done. <clears throat> Instead of looking for excuses, you know, it's, it's, 
it's our problem. And uh, we we figured out the ways to uh, pivot around that and, uh, and and you know set ourselves up. Congratulations to the entire team at Gale. Our final category today, the true colors category. Company culture is a decisive element of success under any circumstances. And during a pandemic, leadership has been critical. The following honorees have maintained an employee-centric focus by managing the health and well-being of their workforce. Advocate Aurora Health, Ascension, Wisconsin. The Bartolotta Restaurants, Brainchild Studios, Brilliant Business Solutions, Bubbler Bikes, CCB Technology, Catholic Financial Life, C.G. Schmidt, Dale Carnegie Training, Girls on the Run, Southeastern Wisconsin, Granular Insulation Technologies Incorporated, DBA Intech, La Causa Incorporated, Medical Eye Associates, Penfield Children's Center, Rocket Clicks, The Star Group, TechLinks, Terror Translations, LLC, and Zymox Technologies Incorporated. Granular, during pre-COVID times, Granular took pride in creating an environment that employees enjoyed. They involved perks like early Fridays, regular ping pong tournaments and baking championships, as well as a full beer fridge and a snack station. In March, Granular was an early adapter of 100% remote work. This of course posed a unique dilemma to Granular's culture. Maintaining an employee-centric atmosphere remained a top priority, even if it was delivered in a different way. Granular pivoted to weekly virtual happy hours, and they frequently engage their team by dropping off gifts like their favorite office snacks, the traditional four foot tall work anniversary balloon, special birthday treats, and even a pepper growing kit as a group activity. From the beginning, Granular understood that the mass shutdowns posed an economic risk along with a health risk. So they utilized local products for their perks. There was a huge Milwaukee pretzel in March, a cookie decorating contest with kits from Edible Impressions in May and breakfast kits from Braze in June. They also sent out local coffee beans monthly and provided everyone with gift cards to their favorite local restaurants. Granular continues to focus on giving employees the work that they want, the clients that interest them, and the tools for them to expand, explore, and grow in the field. Congratulations, Granular. Bartolotta Restaurants. Bartolotta has been a fixture in the Milwaukee community since 1993. Bartolotta Restaurants were among the many businesses forced to temporarily suspend operations because of the pandemic. Well, in March, the Bartolotta Restaurants enacted a crisis communications plan to ensure that all employees understood not only the scope of the pandemic, but also where they could turn to help within the organization and within the community. When the decision was made to suspend dining operations, Chef Paul Bartolotto led efforts to distribute as much food as possible from the organization's restaurants and catering facilities to its workers. These family meals would help employees maintain a semblance of normalcy at the dinner table every night, even as working hours were reduced. As the Bartolotto restaurants begin to resume operations, the organization is investing heavily in projects such as Ristorante Bartolotta's new outdoor courtyard, which was an adjustment to this new normal. It allows the restaurant to remain open and employees to remain on the payroll while continuing to serve the community it has called home for decades. Congratulations to an authentic Milwaukee treasure, the Bartolotta Restaurant Group. Insulation Technologies Incorporated, Intech. Intech started planning for COVID-19 in January. They knew that it was a matter of when, not if, the virus would reach pandemic proportions. Intech takes the health and safety of its employees very seriously. As a family owned and operated business, they see employees' families as an extension of the company. They place multiple orders for personal protective equipment, anticipating that a time would come when these supplies would be scarce. During the initial stages of the Safer at Home order, it wasn't clear if Intech would be considered an essential business. Leaders decided to shut down all field operations for at least two weeks. Two weeks turned into two months. Intech used a PPP loan to make sure that employees had the peace of mind that they would still be collecting income during these times of uncertainty. To prepare for a return to field work, they built a new locker room with hands-free water controls for sinks. They purchased UV lights to disinfect their facility, offices, and trucks, 
and portable UV lights to clean areas in the home where the employees were working. Intech employees typically use N95 respirators on a daily basis. With most of that equipment rerouted to hospitals and first responders, they found a new respirator that fully sealed and filtered the air that the employees would be breathing. After determining their status as an essential business, they had all the tools, equipment, and procedures in place to protect their customers, employees, and their families. They were also able to keep all of their employees despite the two-month shutdown. Today, Intech is stronger and prepared to work with COVID rather than be afraid of it. Congratulations to Intech as we look forward to whatever comes next for your team. CG Schmidt is a family-owned company. Uh, we're in our fourth generation of family leadership. We were founded here in Milwaukee in 1920. So we're celebrating 100 years in business. Uh, we have offices in Milwaukee and Madison. Uh, our employment includes about 350 to 400 people, depending on uh, how much work we have in the field. Our company was, uh, or our, our industry was very early on classified as an essential business. We needed to keep our employees safe. So very quickly, we moved uh, people from the office uh, to work from their homes. We were able to do that in a, a pretty short period of time, but we had to keep our, our projects going. So um, we immediately developed a COVID-19 response plan. So we put all kinds of procedures in place to pre-screen people before they showed up on the project site. Uh, we incorporated a bunch of hand washing stations on every every project and increased the uh, sanitation on the projects to make sure that uh, there was safe for the people to work. I can't say enough about how our, our people have worked through this, uh, the issues that have been caused and stepped up to really help the community uh, get through the pandemic. I think one of our healthcare clients had received a large donation of uh, sanitizer liquid. It came in 55 gallon drums. Uh, so once our, our project team uh, heard about the need, uh, they organized a, a group of people who over three Saturdays donated their time to repackage the uh, sanitizer from the 55 gallon drums into over 25,000 individual bottles of sanitizer that the healthcare workers could use then all throughout Southeast Wisconsin. Our, our firm does a lot of K-12 school projects and typically our project teams will engage with the students um, that are at the, uh, at the school in their classrooms. But with the onset of COVID-19, uh, the schools were closed, the students sent home. Uh, so our project teams use social media to uh, help connect with the students and the staff where they would solicit questions and they would answer the questions uh, via YouTube so that students could learn something and, and see their school uh, actually during the construction process. The Milwaukee and the region here has always been filled with, you know, honest, hardworking, you know, decent people that just want to do the right thing. And it's during a pandemic where you really see, you know, people that, uh, that do want to step up and really help make a difference in their communities. And, and Milwaukee is just a, it's a great place uh, with great people. I, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Congratulations, C.G. Schmidt. And thank you and congratulations to all of our honorees today. Your stories inspire us and remind us just how many committed, inventive, and passionate people call our region home. To conclude today's presentation, I'd like to reintroduce MMAC President Tim Sheehy. Thank you guys so much for today's opportunity. I will see all of you weekday mornings right here on WISN 12 News. Well, congratulations and thank you to each one of the companies and individuals we honored today. We're inspired by your stories of resilience and through your individual efforts, you make the entire Milwaukee region stronger. Simply put, you're examples of Milwaukee at its best. And to rewatch or share each of these stories, visit mmac.org. As we anticipate the advancements that will one day help us all put the COVID-19 pandemic behind us, we want to thank each of our honorees for contributing to the broad sense of hope we all need to continue on this journey. For a deeper look at the stories of our honorees, please see the September 28th issue of BizTimes. And to subscribe to BizTimes, visit them online at biztimes.com. On behalf 
of the MMAC, thank you for joining us today. Our mission is to improve Metro Milwaukee as a place to invest capital, grow businesses, and create jobs. And for more information on how you can join, how you can participate, and how you can help move the region forward, visit mmac.org. Stay safe and thank you.